Why don't you turn it down? Because I don't like hearing that big noise. <laughs> Those who've owned home powered subwoofers know a lot of times the amplifiers in these go bad. It's what happened to my Boston Acoustic CR400 you see here. And instead of trying to take this amplifier out and fix it, I actually did look at it and didn't see what the problem was, I decided this is a good opportunity to buy a couple new plate amps and let's compare them. So that's what I'm going to do today. This Boston CR400 is from the late 90s. You can see it uses a 75 watt amplifier and 8 inch sub. I actually purchased two amps to compare. One is the Young SD300. Both these were purchased from Parts Express. The Young was $109 on sale. Prices may vary at the time of your purchase, but the Young is a Class D amplifier, and I'll show you unboxing it here. Very lightweight, very simple, no frills, and yeah, 300 watts at 4 ohms. Quite a bit more than the Boston needs, but hey, hey you always have more power and turn it down, right? Let's look at the connections on the Young. You can see at the top here we have the level adjustment, we have a crossover and a variable phase, as well as RCA inputs and outputs. Then near the center of the amp we have the high level input. Notice this does not have a high level output. We'll talk about that later. Dimensions are 10 inches or 255 millimeters wide by 7 and 3 eighths or 188 millimeters tall. Here's the rear of the amplifier. You can notice a typical Class D design here with a switch mode power supply, as well as some rail caps and some filtering caps. And the two transistors there have a um, nice little heat sink to keep them nice and cool. And we have the speaker wires. Those are really the only external connections here. It's about two and a half feet, approximately one meter of wire. The second amplifier we purchased was a Dayton Audio SPA250. Again, from Parts Express. This one was $124.90. Again, the price may vary at the time of your purchase. This is a very popular amplifier from Parts Express for the Plate Series. They've been selling this one for quite a while and it has a lot of positive reviews on their website. Check the link in the video description to see the reviews. Check the specs of the Dayton Audio SPA250. You can see 156 watts at 8 ohms or 252 watts in the 4 ohms. Here on the rear of the amplifier, you can see the inputs and outputs for high levels, RCA inputs and outputs, a gain level adjustment, as well as a crossover adjustment from 40 hertz to 180 hertz, 24 dB per octave in the specs. Also, we have an auto on selector and a phase selector. One big difference from the Young Amp, the Young Amp actually has a variable phase control. The dimensions of the Dayton Audio SPA250 are 9 and 7 eighths or 250 millimeters wide and tall. It's a square. Also you'll notice the back of the Dayton is enclosed. It's kind of unique. And here we'll show the other amplifier, the Young. You can see how it's open and exposed, which hmm, may be interesting to see what the difference with that is with long-term durability. The Dayton also has a little rubber grommet which exposes the bass boost for off or on. Of course, for all our tests here, we leave it off. And it has the same about two and a half feet of speaker wire to connect to your subs. Now, one of the huge differences between the amplifiers are the weight. You can see the Dayton Audio SPA250 is 11 pounds, 12 ounces, or 5.33 kilograms. Class AB design, whereas the Young SP300 is only two pounds, 10 ounces, or 1.19 kilograms, considerably lighter. Okay, now we'll get the amplifiers connected up. We used RCA line level inputs from the Alpine head unit that we've shown before. The Dayton Audio amplifier is going into channel one of the 81, whereas the Young connected here using the RCAs is gonna go into input two of the 81. Also, I used the included wiring to go to the subwoofers going to the dyno that was included with the amp. That way it gives you an idea of what you can see to go into your amp. It appears to be around 16 gauge. All right, a couple important things I'm gonna show here. RCA line level out of the Alpine head unit 
go into the Dayton amp, you can see where we have the gain control set here. 2.35 volts AC coming out of the channels going into the Dayton. The Young saw 2.31, which is virtually identical. And we set the crossovers to the maximum value here so it would not interfere with the test. And we matched the gains on both amps. All right, now we got the dyno fired up. One more very important thing to show you is the track we use for the certified test is a sliding track, which goes from lower volume up to a higher volume. I'm kind of showing you here on the multimeter what that looks like to the amplifier. All right, first up, we're gonna try eight ohm test. Now the Dayton audio amp actually has a rating. The Young does not. The Dayton says it'll do 156 watts at 0.1% THDs. It actually got 167, whereas the Dayton got 155. Yeah, boy! Also, just to minimize confusion, the voltage you see here, the 12.25, 12.26 volts, that's the AC adapter that was included with the dyno. All right, next up, we'll try the dynamic track at eight ohms. This is a burst tone at 40 hertz, kind of uh, simulating subwoofers, a subwoofer track, bass drum kick, things like that. You can see the Dayton again, 210 watts versus 172, Dayton out on top. Nice job. So next up, we'll try four ohm tests. And this is where both amplifiers are rated to be their optimal power. The Dayton is rated 252 watts, whereas the Young is rated at 300 watts. And check this out. Look how close these got to their ratings, 253 and 302. Wow. Yeah, boy. So we kind of expected the Young to come out on top because it's rated 50 watts more. Next up, we'll try the dynamic test of both amps. And this is something I didn't really expect. Look at the Dayton, 410 watts versus 330. Oh, it's counting a little more. 410 versus 334. So 410 for the Dayton, 334 for the Young. Yeah, boy. What'd you say? Turn it down. Why don't you need to turn it down? Because I don't like hearing that big noise. <laughs> All right, so in order to keep this video from being way too long, I decided to break it up into two parts. So I'm gonna try each amplifier on this Boston sub and test it out and see which one I like. And I'll update you guys in a future video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the test of the Dayton versus the Young. This is Big D Wiz, old school stereo.com. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Like, comment below. Until next time, I'm out of here. All right, just to hope we don't blow anything up here, we're going to try 2.67 ohms dynamic at 40 hertz. Young is on channel two. Dayton is on channel one. Fingers crossed we don't blow anything. Let's see what we get. All right, looks like the Dayton went in to protect. The Young did not. Young is still lit up green, but look at the power. Dayton outdid it, 505 to 457. Cool.